بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسلام الله على المرسلين إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم ويرد على بيت الله 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 ويرد and putting them in a manner where, where he can respond to them. There's quite a volume of questions, and I'm not sure that he's going to be able to get to all of them tonight. However, we would like to encourage you to visit his website. That's todayislam.com, and if there are any questions that you have that are not answered tonight, he will be, uh, gladly uh, answer them for you on the internet, inshallah. I'd like to share with you an experience that uh, I had on one of his visits to our prisons in South Carolina. We have approximately 22,000 inmates in the South Carolina Department of Corrections, of, of which about 5% of them are Muslim, roughly 1,000 Muslims spread out throughout uh, 29 correctional facilities, which I have to service throughout the state. And on one of his visits, he encouraged the, the, the men in, in the particular facility to tell their families about the, the website. And you know, if you know anything about corrections and inmates, inmate mentality, is something that's very, very delicate very, and, and very guarded, to say the least. So he encouraged the, the inmates to tell their families to go to the website and pull up some information off of the website and print it, but don't read it. And can you imagine an inmate in a prison telling his family member to go to the website, print some information, but don't read it? What are they going to do? <laughs> One young man told his sister to do that. She read the information. She went to the mosque in Charlotte, North Carolina, and she became a Muslim. She took her declaration of faith. Alhamdulillah. So I hope that uh, you will get, I know you get your, 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 your time worthwhile to answer in, in the question that he, he will be answering. So. Without any further ado, <laughs> you know this is the only this is the only man that I've ever met who has elevated pizza to another level. <laughs> he's ever elevated pizza to another level. When he's around the youth, he'll ask him, "What's brain food?" And they look at each other. Speak about material. And they'll look at each other like, "Brain food? What is brain food?" But you know. If you go to any college campus today, and you see them staying up late at night, studying, cramming, and, you know, for the exams, and they, they eat this food that comes in a big box, that comes to them on wheels. And so it must be brain food. <laughs> you didn't just tell you said, all right, he got half of it, but he didn't get all of it. <laughs> the whole idea behind bringing this up is not just to talk about brain food. And, and so, because I work with children who are descendants of Arabs many times in the United States, and the children uh, are very uh, Americanized, if you will, and they don't really speak very much Arabic. So, the Arabic language is very powerful and has a lot of things, but there's two things that the Arabic language doesn't have. The letter V is in Volkswagen. And the letter B as in Pakistan. So when uh, whenever I tell the story of the pizza, I say, now would you like me to teach you how to say brain food in Arabic? They say, yeah, pizza. <laughs> it goes good with pizza. <laughs> And when the man delivers it, he barks the car and comes in with it. <laughs> I can't believe he stole my material, man. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I'm going to let it slide because you had a long day today. Inshallah, God willing, we're going to try to answer 12 questions. The majority of the questions that came were very similar, so what I did, I took the opportunity to compile them down. Is there any of the questions which deal with issues that are for Muslims to ask their scholars? I defer that to a scholar. We do have our own sheikh with us, and if anybody has any questions, Muslim questions for a scholar, 
he's sitting right over there, they can ask him. Okay? Because that's not my job. My job is not to uh, talk to you in Arabic language, and my job is not to tell you what we call Islamic ruling or fatawa. That's not my job. And I'm dealing only with the questions relative to the topic we had tonight. So if you had questions not relative, then you can present them to him, and he'll be happy through translation if you need it to give you any answers you would like. God willing. Okay, let's begin. And uh, some I want statistical information about Islam. How many Muslims are in the USA? And actually, I had to ask my sheikh, how many was that? Between six and ten million. He said between six and ten million. Then they asked how many mosques are in the United States. About 1,200, with more being built every day. I would like to mention this. You didn't ask this question. But my colleague and I can testify to this without any hesitation or reservation to tell you that without doubt, that while we had our program tonight, I'm sure a lot more people in America became Muslim. Because even in his one state of South Carolina, there are literally thousands who have come into Islam. And in my state, which is, I live in Northern Virginia, right by Washington, D.C., we also see many hundreds. I've given the, what we call shahada to so many that I lost the count years ago. Many people are entering Islam in America and in other countries. But you might also like to know who are these people? Many of them are African Americans. But there are other ethnic groups as well. From the white Americans, they don't have a lot of knowledge of it. And it wasn't until September 11th that we started to go on their pilgrimage to Jerusalem. They try, and this, these are good people. They, you know, we should give them credit for what they're trying to do. But in Islam, it's very clear that if a person leaves any of the five points that I mentioned, they're leaving Islam. So for the benefit of the Muslims who thought they could just say, I love Allah, and Allah loves me, Allah answered them, and this is for the Muslims, I'll tell you what the Quran said, Tell them, if they say, I love Allah, tell them, then follow me, meaning the Prophet. And then and only then Allah will love them and forgive their sins. So this is very important for us to know that Islam requires more than belief. You have to work every day. So that's to give a little overall. If somebody wants me to do comparative religion, that's as far as I'll go. The next thing it asks, they ask the question, how can I get a copy of the Holy Quran? And I appreciate that, and I, I wish I could tell you how easy it is to do it in the States. But here it's more complicated. The, your effort will, won't be that much harder, but for our effort will be. You go to our website, Today is Slam, and look on the page that says Free Quran. At the top of the page, look for Free Quran, and then click on that link and send us email. I have no idea how long it's going to take to send it because it's going to have to come what they call over the water, what do they call that kind of shipping? Huh? Ocean freight. Ocean freight? Snail mail. Snail mail. <laughs> oh, that's right, I forgot about that. Uh, Mohammed Zadid, who is the president of the Muslim Association here, Islamic Association, uh, we made an agreement with him to send a whole case that uh, I didn't even tell him how many we were going to send yet, I just told him we were going to send them. But he should have those whenever the snail mail gets here. <laughs> and uh, which, how long do you think it will take? It will take about two months. One month? One month? Yes. So at that time, what I'd like for you to do right now before you leave tonight, write your name, your telephone number, <laughs> and your address on a piece of paper. Because I forgot to say that in the talk, that we do provide free Qurans. We send them all over the world. It asked me the question why I changed to Islam. This story is on the internet itself. It's 16 pages or something when you print out the whole thing. Obviously, you don't want me to use the rest of the night just to talk about that. So I'm going to tell you, go to the Today Islam website and read the story, print it out, and read it for yourself. Bottom line is, I never felt like that I really left Christianity. I felt like I became a better Christian because I learned who Jesus really was and what his message was. And I'm worshiping the God that Jesus worshipped. I'm sorry that's a short answer, but if you go read it, it gives the whole story. How I came to Islam, how a Catholic priest came to Islam with us, and my wife and my father, many about 
About one fourth, maybe more, of my family came to Islam, and the others stayed Christian. Because we come from a family that's been Christian since before there was recorded history in our family. So we built churches in America and in England, so, you know, they're not all ready to just walk away yet. But maybe they will. I'm not trying to be smart at it with anybody, okay? But I'm going to tell you, the Quran means that which is recited. It is not a book. If somebody has a book, it has a representation of Quran that is not Quran. Explanation? If you have a dollar bill in your pocket, it says one dollar. But you have another dollar bill that says one hundred dollars. Are they worth exactly the same, yes or no? no? Yes, they are. The paper is the same, the ink is the same, the difference is the value people gave it, right? Right or wrong? So the money only represents something to the people, but it's not the real wealth. The wealth is somewhere else. The gold, the silver, or whatever backs up that dollar is somewhere else. The Quran is not here. It's somewhere else. It's with the law. When you recite it and say it, you're saying it. You're representing it. Some of us, we recite it with a better voice than others. And some of us make more mistakes than others. Just bring it. And what you will bring me is a translation of the Bible in a language. But if I ask you to please, I brought the original Quran, could you please bring the original Bible? And the answer is you can't. And that's why so many Catholic priests have become Muslim. Because they realize, wait a minute, what am I doing? What am I saying? Because it's the same message. It's not different. But there is a difference in who controls everything. There is no church in Islam that pays money to a bigger church that pays money to a bigger church. There is no such thing in Islam. The money that I told you that the wealthy have to pay has to be given to the poor and the orphans. There's no such thing as a big, huge place collecting up billions and billions of dollars in Islam. It never was, never will be. So wealth is a big important thing to human beings, but it means nothing to God. He doesn't need your money. So the true religion of God says what? Give your charity to the people that need it. And so that's what we do. Just open your heart. Like our brother said when we started, make your heart like a parachute. Because that's the only way it's going to do any good is if it's open. Open yourself to this message. I did. And think about it. <laughs> They're looking at everybody else, trying to decide what they are. Don't blame Islam for what Muslims do. That answers your question about terrorism, doesn't it? Don't blame a religion for what people do. How many of you heard of Oklahoma City? Anybody ever heard of a place called Oklahoma City? Okay, there was a federal building that blew up there in 1996. Immediately they said Muslims did it, and they were dressed in Arab garb, and they were heading for Mexico. Now that's 1,500 miles away, how they know they're going to Mexico? But guess what? It wasn't a Muslim. It was a man by the name of Timothy McVeigh. How many of you know what his religion was? He was Catholic. And nobody made the Pope write an excuse for him either. And I don't blame the Catholic Church for what he did. Do you? He did it on his own, didn't he? Nobody went and looked in the Bible and said, where did he get that from, did they? Duh. Which religion is correct? <coughs> Jewish, Christian, or Islam? I don't know. I blame myself for this because it means I didn't make a very good presentation for you. <laughs> I just got through telling you that there's no religion that's going to be acceptable to God except the one that He sent. That's what Islam means. Jesus submitted to God. He said, I only do what God sent me to do. Isn't that right? Did He? He said, I do the will of the Father. Did He say that? Yes or no? What does that mean? It means Islam. So he was a what? A what? Go ahead, say it. It's an Arabic word. You can say it. He was a... Muslim. 
So they're all right at the time they came, but people changed them and called them by a place, a thing, or a person. We believe that all religions came from God. We believe that there was only one religion and one message, but people kept changing it so they could control other people. They manipulated it so they could take the money, the power, and enslave the people. This is what we believe. One God, one religion, people changed it. I want to just say I want to submit. Who cares? It's not an Arabic contest. In fact, the only contest is between you and your own, you call nafs in Arabic, between you and your heart. You've got to give up some of the things of this world so you get a share in the next world. It's a little bit expensive, but it's worth it. So the only religion is the one God sent. Now if you say, well, do you believe all Muslims are going to paradise? I'm going to tell you, Islam is a strange religion. Because every religion promises you, you get our religion, you're going to paradise. Isn't that what they say? Yeah. You join us, you're going to paradise. Didn't they say that? Yeah. For sure, if you come with us, you go to Jannah, paradise, heaven, right? Mm-hmm. Islam doesn't teach that. In fact, we're the only religion that can guarantee you can go to hell. (laughs) Because when you enter into Islam, if you're not sincere, how would I know? I would never know that, would I? And you can come up and put on your best face every day. How are you today? (laughs) And I don't know. I don't have a clue what's inside your heart, right? But God knows. So who is going to decide? (laughs) Who is the best of the judges? It's Allah. God will judge all of us on the day of judgment. So we don't promise paradise. What we promise is that there is the way. If you want it good, it's open for you. You want to go? It's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. Everybody else promises you come to our religion, it's going to be easy. You just do this or that and it's easy. I'm going to tell you that God told you in the Quran. Do they think they're going to be left alone just because they say we believe and that I'm not going to test them? For sure I'm going to test them just like I tested the ones before to show you the truth of those that are truthful and show you the liars and their falsehood. I want to go over something with you. Boy, we went through that real fast. I want to go over something with you and show you how easy it is and how simple and soft it is to say the words. Doesn't mean anything for sure if you didn't mean it. But I'll just show you the words. The words are so simple that babies say it when they're laying on their back on a nice day and see the baby playing and making the little bubbles that they do. You watch them do that. La, 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 la. You hear babies do that? La, 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 la. You hear babies do that? Now listen to this. La ilaha illallah. Say it. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Is that fun? La ilaha. Say it. La ilaha illallah. Now, what do you say? La means no. Ilaha means God. Illa except Almighty God. There's no God except Almighty God. There's nothing worthy to worship in this creation. Only the one that created it. Did it feel good? Want to say it again? Now this time you know what it is. So if you don't mean it, don't say it. If you don't believe there's a God, don't say it. If you don't want to worship Him alone, don't say it. But if you feel like that, then say it with me. La ilaha. 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 You can say it louder than that. I got a microphone. La ilaha. La ilaha. 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 Wow, that's pretty good. Now, if you really want to do what he wants you to do, you say the second part. The second part means that you're going to follow what the prophets brought on the terms that God sent them with. And that says Muhammad is his messenger. <coughs> Not a God. We don't worship Muhammad. Not a son of God. We don't think God has any sons or daughters for that matter. But he has some great prophets. Jesus happens to be one of the greatest, most beautiful miracles that ever happened. But we still don't call him God. We call him Jesus. Or Esau. That's his name. And we always say peace, 
be upon him when we say his name. And we never use his name in a cuss word. We never use Allah's name in a cuss word. And we never say Muhammad in a cuss word. We don't do that. That's considered horrible. Horrible. Muslims don't make fun of their religion. So if you want to say the second part, it's a little, little bit harder than the first part. Muhammad our Rasulullah. That's it. Wasn't that hard, was it? <laughs> La ilaha illallah. Muhammad our Rasulullah. No God to worship except Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Now, if anybody wants to make that testimony of faith, if there's any Muslims here that you never made that testimony of faith in front of people before, or if you feel you need to renew your shahada, or you know what I mean by that if you're Muslim, and for those who would like to join us in testimony for that, to open this door, then you can just stand up with us. And, hello? <laughs> okay. All those who want to, you don't have to. This is, we're not going to give you any prize. <laughs> but if you want to, you stand up and you say these words and then ask God to open your heart and make it come true. That's all you're doing. You don't have to pay any money. Nobody's going to chase you down the street. <laughs> La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah now we're going to say it as a bearing witness. This means now, I swear that this is true. A shadow, Allah, Ilaha, Illallah. Wa a shadow, An Muhammad, Rasulullah. Allah Akbar. And now I'm going to make a little prayer and I'm going to ask God. Allah, Rabbana, Atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhir fi hasanatan wa kina ala minna. Oh Allah, we ask for you the good of this life and the good of the next life. And we seek refuge in you from the fire of hell. Amen. And we thank all of you for being with us tonight. And I look forward to the next time I have a chance to visit with you beautiful people here in Carousel. Thank you so much for opening your hearts and your minds to this program and inviting us to be here. I really enjoyed it. Thank you.